আমন্ত্রণ আন্তর্জাতিক সম্পর্ক উন্নয়ন বিষয়ক অনুষ্ঠান ডিপ্লোম্যাটিক জোনে আপনাদের সঙ্গে আছি আমি নবিলা হাসান আমাদের আজকের অতিথি সম্প্রতি বাংলাদেশ সফররত ক্যানেডিয়ান চ্যাপ্টার অফ কমনওয়েলথ পার্লামেন্টারি অ্যাসোসিয়েশন সিপিএর ছয় সদস্যের প্রতিনিধি দলের প্রধান মিস্টার রাস হিবার্ট এমপি দর্শক সাক্ষাৎকারটি নিয়েছিলাম স্থানীয় একটি হোটেলে যেখানে মিস্টার হিবার্ট কথা বলেছেন দ্বিপাক্ষিক সম্পর্ক উন্নয়ন বাণিজ্য সম্প্রসারণ সহ অনেক বিষয় চলুন দেখে আসি সেই সাক্ষাৎকারটি Very welcome to our show, Diplomatic Zone. How are you today? I'm doing great, Nabila. Thank you for having me on your show. So is this your first visit in Bangladesh? It is, actually. Uh, I've had the opportunity to travel to many Commonwealth countries as a member and chair of the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association. But this is my first visit to Bangladesh. And I'm delighted to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to you to be here, actually. And so what is your objective so, uh, to visit in Bangladesh? Well, we have a couple of objectives. Uh, one is to learn about uh, your parliamentary system. Mm -hmm. As parliamentarians, we met with uh, your uh, speaker and your mm -hmm. chief whip. Uh, we're here to explore our development programs. Canada invests a lot of money uh, in, through CEDA mm -hmm. in cooperation with the Bangladesh government to improve the lives of uh, the Bangladesh people. And we're also here to explore trade opportunities. Um, we can talk more about that, but there's tremendous uh, opportunities for many objectives. Okay. to grow there. And finally, to emphasize our bilateral relationship. We have a long history together, mm -hmm. and we want to uh, deepen the relationship that we have and emphasize how important it is to both of us. So uh, today is your second, and what did you find? Like, uh, what have you seen in Bangladesh? We've had an opportunity uh, to see a number of very interesting things. Uh, yesterday, we started our day looking at a garment factory. Mm -hmm. um, we uh, visited a BRAC school, uh, we went to a wheat mill and bakery, and at the end of the day, we're looking at a UNICEF and CEDAR project working CEDAR project, on yes. uh, immunizations and mm -hmm. cold storage of immunizations. So uh, what is your impression after visiting these places? Well, that's a great question, Avila. Um After we saw the garment factory, I was very impressed uh, with the efficiency with which mm -hmm. it was operating. Um, that's a huge competitive advantage that your country has in terms of uh, a strong labor force, uh, very industrious people working very hard. Um, you know, Bangladesh exports their, their uh, garments Gardens, all, over yes, the world. all over the world. Uh, yeah. And I know that uh, in Canada we also benefit from these exports. Uh, in addition to that, we saw the, uh, the wheat mill, very mm -hmm. large wheat mill, it's an Ifad mill. Uh, Ifad, yes. I think they grind, they said about 160 tons of grain a day, Damn. and a large portion of that is Canadian grain. Okay. So we were very pleased to see all that Canadian product working through their system, and also they have a bakery, and so we saw them uh, producing biscuits. A lot of things, salts as well, <coughs> salt. Uh, also I salt, think yes. they do salt, mm -hmm. yeah, they do pasta, they do bottled water, uh, all kinds of things. Um, we also saw the school, so we went to a grade mm -hmm. 5 school uh, in, uh, I guess it was called the slums, mm -hmm. and we saw 31 students uh, uh, learning their, their materials and learning English, and we had an opportunity to spend some time with them. Uh, again, very delighted that the BRAC program and uh, Canada's Very cheerful event it was actually. Oh yeah, they were very, very, very friendly, very friendly children. But delighted to see how equal opportunity for education was being provided to boys and girls uh, in this community. And then we ended the day at a UNICEF project where we, uh, another Canadian contribution working with Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. um, the cold storage of immunizations is a very important process. Yes. And uh, we met with many of the doctors that implement this immunization program and saw how they've seen tremendous progress in the last decade in terms of the number of children that are being immunized across the country. So do you think these are okay? Like, uh, we, do we need more, like, uh, we need to give more effort for this, or it's going on the right track? It's, I think it's on the right track. I mean, the, the data would suggest that uh, they're getting very high you know, res results. There's obviously some roadblocks mm -hmm. to, to getting uh, into the rural communities, but you know, they're in the 90, you know, or 90 plus percentile in terms of the number of children that they've been able to inoculate against measles and rubella and, and so on. So, yeah, again, just another example of how Canada mm -hmm. and Bangladesh have been working together for many years and another project here where we can uh, make a difference in the lives of people here in Bangladesh. So, and uh, today was your first Hortal day. 
So maybe you got a lot of problem or what do you think actually, what are your thoughts of the current situation in Bangladesh right now? Well, I have to say that I am concerned uh, about the violence associated with mm -hmm. the Hartel. Um, you know, there's been scores of Bangladeshi people that have been killed uh, or injured in these uh, violent protests. It's my hope, and I think I could you know, say that the government of Canada hopes that the uh, political parties can work together to resolve this peacefully. Um, we don't want to see this kind of violence yes. injuring. We have to so work many. together, actually. I think that would be very important. It sends a strong message. Uh, to you know, to everybody that's participating in, in civil society, that you know, we stand for and uh, believe in freedom of expression yes. and freedom of assembly. Those are the important democratic values that, as members of the Commonwealth, we hold dear. But um, I think the political parties all need to play a greater role in ensuring that those rights to freedom of expression and freedom of assembly are enforced in a peaceful way. So there is a lot of lack, lack of this, right, well, here in I Bangladesh? Mean, you know, we, you know, we heard about the violence associated mm. with these uh, hartals, the Hartel and uh, other. Uh, people being killed or injured, and, you know, there's one thing for democratic um, countries to experience protests. We experience them in Canada as well. But it's another thing... Not in a severe way, severe way like this. Well, the, you know, the protests can be severe, but we don't experience the violence uh, okay. associated with the, the protests here in Bangladesh. It uh, actually caused great hamper to any kind of exporting business or any kind of business, actually. You, know, you raise a very important point, and I was going to touch on that in a, in a little while, but you're absolutely right. When this kind of political unrest occurs, foreign companies like Canadian companies... Yes, yes are nervous about investing yes. in a country that experiences this kind of violence. And there's no doubt that this economic, um, that it has an economic impact. This kind of instability, protests, will definitely have an impact on your productivity, on your GDP, and um, certainly when foreign companies are considering investing in Bangladesh, and I hope many will, I will strongly encourage them to do so, it would, be them, it would be easier for them to do so if there was some stability to the political system. Yes, it will invite more foreigners as well if we have stable politics here, actually. Absolutely. you have yes. more tourists, you have more mm -hmm. industry, you have more foreign investment. More investment, foreign yeah. investment. And that's only good for the economy. I yes, the, and good for the country as well. It's very good for the country, yeah. yeah. Bangladesh has tremendous opportunity. It's a hard-working, industrious people. A lot of skilled people, but... Skilled labor yes. is, is, is growing. Uh, it has a bright future if it can get beyond the violence. You know, the economy has been growing on average around five or six percent, but I think it can grow even more if, if this hotel and other things instability mm -hmm. would, would get addressed. If the political parties would work together to to resolve that, you would see even greater things developing in Bangladesh. So I, I think it has the potential. It just has some obstacles right now. So we ho hope for the best also for our country. So now we will take a short break. Doshok dekhte naanto jati shampur ko inan bishe kono chhan diplomatic zone. E porjai nitsi biroti phici ek tu pori she porjon to amader shangi thakun. আবারও আমন্ত্রণ ডিপ্লোম্যাটিক জোন অনুষ্ঠানে কথা বলছিলাম সম্প্রতি বাংলাদেশ সফররত ক্যানেডিয়ান চ্যাপ্টার অফ কমনওয়েলথ পার্লামেন্টারি অ্যাসোসিয়েশন সিপি এর 6 সদস্যের প্রতিনিধি দলের প্রধান मिस্টার রাশিবাট এমপি সঙ্গে আপনারা জানেন এই সাক্ষাৎকারটি নিয়েছিলাম স্থানীয় একটি হোটেলে চলুন দেখে আসি সাক্ষাৎকারটির বাকি অংশটুকু ওয়েলকাম अगेन অনারেবল রাশিবাট so we were talking about the politics and after that we want to know about that Canada is a good uh, trading partner. So how, how we can enhance our relationship with you? Well, um, I should start by noting that Canada and Bangladesh trade about $1.65 billion a year. That was for 2012 numbers. And uh, we've gotten to that place because Canada in part lifted the duty, you know, duty on mm -hmm. Bangladesh exports uh, a number of years ago. That's, that's a great result. I mean, if you think about it, Canada and India just three or four years ago were trading at about $1.6 billion, just three mm -hmm. or four years ago. And now Canada and India are trading over $5 billion. Oh my God. So if we see that kind of mm -hmm. growth in our relationship with India, why couldn't we see that kind of growth in my our relationship wish. with mm -hmm. Bangladesh? 
Um, so there's there's lots of things that we can exchange. Uh, Agri food is an important. These export. are the sectors, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, we you know Canada exports a lot of grains, uh, lentils, to Bangladesh. We have a thriving information and communications technology that we can export to your country. Um, there's also uh, the BlackBerry. You know you've heard mm -hmm. Research in Motion. Mm -hmm. Very famous Canadian company yes. uh, that's exporting its products all around the world. And uh, of course, in return, you send us garments, and yes. we're, we're big purchasers of that. So those are, that's a good foundation to start with. I think there's tremendous opportunities that move beyond that. Um, but uh, yeah, I think the future is bright in terms of building that trade relationship. But again, going back to the political instability, yes. that's what needs to get resolved. That's the most important Before, thing to fix I, it. I believe, you know, that... If that was to happen, you'd see far greater investment in, uh, in Bangladesh, from Canada, and from around the world. Yes. And uh, what do you have learned from here in Bangladesh, like in these this two days? Well, um, <laughs> I've learned that uh, the Bangladeshi people are hardworking, industrious people. They are committed to providing for their families and working hard. Um, you see them. They're very entrepreneurial, you know, okay. in terms mm -hmm. of starting businesses, micro businesses thriving, uh, and uh, yeah, when you have that kind of character as a nation, that kind of you know uh, background, I think you will have a very bright future. I, I really do because um, that that uh, ingenuity, that industriousness, um, that efficiency that we saw at the garment factory, people working very fast, very hard. Very consistently, will uh, will ultimately increase the product of uh, the productivity, yes. productivity, and also the standard of living yes. for everybody in the country. And right now, you have a competitive advantage in terms of your labor rates. But mm -hmm. I think that going forward, you can also develop a skills advantage. You know, yes. if Bangladesh was to focus on education, name the sector. It could be nursing. It could be technology. Mm -hmm. It could be engineering. Any sector, yes. You know, really, Bangladesh could. Um, could become an expert in those fields and uh, in addition send you know, those skilled labor to other countries and your remittances yes. come back mm -hmm. would increase the, the standard of living yes. as well. So is there any message you want to share to all Bangladeshi people? Well just to, just to let them know that um, Canada is interested in developing and deepening our relationship that uh, you know, from what I saw uh, I think you have every reason to be proud as a nation uh, for the progress that you're making economically. I think that um, Bangladeshi people should expect the political parties to work together to resolve the violence that mm -hmm. is so often associated with these cartels. Um, personally, I want to compliment the government for the works that, that it's done in, in addressing the uh, terrorism issues. I think that has been uh, some strong progress. Um, so is there more work to be done? Of course, you know. In every democratic country, including yes. Canada, there's always work to be done. So um, I'm, uh, again, very delighted that we've been tr treated so very, very well. The hospitality has been fantastic. Thank you so much. And uh, actually, we are very uh, end of the program. And thank you very much for your valuable time. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Doshok Declan Shamputi Bangladesh Safurato, Canadian Chapter of Commonwealth Parliamentary Association, CPA Chosho de Shir Putin Dale Putan, Mr. Rush Hibbert MP Shakat Kati, Shesh Kurtsi as a diplomatic son. Agamite, Abano Dakabe Notunkono Otiti Shange, Shepojunto Shabai Balotakun, Shusatakun, Dunubat.